Hi everyone, I'm going to attempt to talk through my process um, as I go this afternoon. Sorry, I just changed my light slightly. Um, I do have a bit of a cough and there's noise in the background, so we'll see how we go as far as audio. But you will at least be able to see how I'm working. I'm going to start on this little guy's eyes. And as we're on, um, we're on Strathmore 400 series vellum. So the idea is that we work from the lighter colours towards the darker colours. There is a little bit of flexibility with this, um, but mainly that's going to be the way I work. So I'm just setting down his um, eyelashes, I think that's what they're called, aren't they? <laughs> just to get those in place before I add any darker colours. And again, on his other eye, with coloured pencil, you want to build the layers very gradually. So just a really, really light pressure in the direction of the hairs and also the length of the hair. And you notice hair, hair tapers at the end. So you just want to lift your pencil off your paper as it gets to the end to get a natural looking effect. I quite often get asked how I keep my paper so clean when I'm working and I basically whenever I see a tiniest little dot of dark pigment or dust or something, just got a little bit of um, putty rubber and I just dab it off every time I see it so I don't ever let it get dirty and then um, try and clean it afterwards it's just as I go I try and just keep it clean just dab around it's amazing how much dirt accumulates on this paper. So before this is a Strathmore vellum so it, you might just be able to see it's got a reasonable amount of tooth it's not as it's the 400 series it's not as toothy as the 500 and I tend to prefer a smoother paper if I'm using this type of paper. Um, so the 400 I think will suit me better than the, than the 500 vellum. But I want a little bit of tooth because this is quite a textured little foal. So I don't want to go as light as using a, a real smooth paper. Or as smooth as using a smooth paper, I should say. <laughs> Not making sense. So I'm just starting to go back where the eye is going to go. Again, really, really light pressure at this point. Just thinking about the hair on there. Um, putting down a little base of the colour and I'm not scrubbing backwards and forwards with my pencil I'm literally just putting a prime pigment with the downstroke if you can I find that is something I just it comes a little bit more naturally now as I go around his blaze the white marking on his face the edge and just at this point thinking about um, the hairs at the end and there's things we can do which I'll show you as a final step to really get those little hairs coming through but at the moment I'm just laying the base colour so I'm not trying to put every hair in at this stage it just literally is like a wash of colour and you can do, you know, putting these base layers down, you can do in a variety of ways. For this, I'm using the pencils themselves. You can use pan pastels, a very light layer of pan pastel, um, watercolour pencils, ink pens, um, all sorts of stuff just to get that those first colours down. And if you try to go straight away in and put the detail, you end up getting, you end up losing something, you end up getting so hung up on the details that you lose the form um, and you, you start it starts to look a bit clinical rather than it looking like living breathing hairy horse or whatever animal you're drawing so again you can just see the pressing so lightly you can still see the texture of the paper showing through see it's not hugely textured but it's just got a nice little bit there my line drawing, if you can just see, is very, very faint. Um, I basically do my preparatory drawings on a separate piece of paper. 
so that if I want to change things, change composition, um, alter perspective, quite often with horses, um, you'll get really big fat noses and skinny little necks. So I want to address that um, at the initial drawing stage rather than once it's on my final finished paper. So yes, yeah, so I do my preparatory drawing on a, a cheap sheet of layout paper, nothing fancy. And when I'm happy with that, then I use um, Frisk Trace Down Graphite paper to transfer a very, very light line, just an outline, just to give me a guide so I can think about the values and the textures now rather than the, the placement of the drawing. I don't tend to directly trace, um, partly because I usually change things. Um, I very rarely just copy a photo. Um, and also that initial drawing, I feel it's, it allows me time to really look at my subject, really observe it, start to make some decisions, even if it's subconsciously, about how I'm going to approach the drawing, which techniques I'm going to use, um, which colours I want to use. So by the time I actually get to this point, I've already almost drawn it in my head a little. Um, and obviously you have to be adaptable and you'll make changes as you go. But I learned quite a long time ago that just starting with a blank sheet of paper and no clue about what I was going to do next didn't tend to end well for me. Some people work that way all the time and do it brilliantly, but it's not my um, preferred way of working. I like a little bit of a plan in place before I start. See, I'm just working using here sheets of glassine. This is the stuff that comes with pastel mat. Use tracing paper or anything. I like to have a, something that's clear so I can still see the image underneath. Um, but really, it's anything just to stop the oils from my hand sort of smoothing across um, and dragging um, pigment and making a smudge. Again, if you do happen to smudge, it's not the end of the world. You just dab it off with your putty rubber. Try and keep my hands. I tend to quite often work like that. <laughs> I do my best not to because it doesn't help anyone. <laughs> I'm trying to see what I'm doing. So, colour pencil is not a quick medium. I'm sure you can, if you've had any attempts at it, I'm sure you realise that. It's definitely something um, to get lost in, to get really absorbed by one of the reasons I enjoy working this way. I also love the precision it gives me. Um, being able to get really, really detailed and also be pretty loose because you can be quite sketchy with it. Um, I always intend to be a little looser with my work and then by the time I've finished I've gone just as tight as I ever do. <laughs> just the whole time I'm just really looking at, you can't see obviously on the video but I'm just flicking back to my reference which I have on an iPad by the side of me and what I'll do is I'll post the um, reference photo at the start of this video so you can see what I'm working from I'm just flicking backwards and forwards constantly checking um, so I'm not just going off on my own little world once I'm in the drawing Again, if you're not aiming for realism, it doesn't matter. But I, I am. I want it to look real. I'm not really aiming for photo real. I'm happy for it like a drawing. Um, I don't particularly look indistinguishable from the photo. I want people to be able to see that I've drawn it. Um, but I also want it to be accurate. I quite often like playing with the colours, especially in the backgrounds and things, but I want the anatomy and the form to be as accurate as possible. I think, you know, from those, horses are my thing, the thing I've always drawn since I was a little girl. And they're something I really love to draw. And if I need a bit of inspiration or motivation um, rebuilt, then it's normally a horse I'll go for. So I do enjoy doing other things as well. <coughs> Excuse me, I am coughing a little bit at the moment. I hope the mic is picking this up clearly enough. Okay, so 
I'm just not going to go around the whole of the face just yet. You can see little chunks of pencil just um, tend to detach from the lead. So just a little, a little blow, get rid of them. really observing so with eyes you want to be really accurate with your shape like if you're doing an ear or a mane or something it's not going to matter too much if you go a little bit off the original because ears and things are um, slightly different shapes but eyes have a very definite shape and you can often have a whole you know spend a lot of time getting your fur texture and beautiful but the eyes are wrong they're, they're just not they're not round they're not how a horse's eye would be um, and it can be a bit frustrating to get to that point and I would normally I mean I've started with the ears on this one it's just at the top there normally um, start with the eyes but I just really was itching to get on and draw that forelock so um, got stuck into that straight away. You can see sometimes where it's a toothy paper, I'm just turning. If you can see there, the um, get a bit closer. Yeah, there's an angle forming on the pencil, so it gives you a sharp point. I'm just turning the pencil every few strokes just to keep a nice sharp edge against the paper. But again, I'm, I'm using it really lightly so I'm not ending up with lots of lines. I just want a nice even coverage but I am working in the direction of the hair. So if any lines do inadvertently sort of appear I don't want to sort of draw that way and then this way and whatever and then expect to put texture on on top you want to keep it in the direction as much as possible and then I'm looking I'll look back at my base I want a nice flat base so some areas haven't got filled quite so evenly so I can just go back with a very sharp point and add them in that makes sense actual very very base very very base a very flat basic layer I don't use um, additional tools or whatever in the solvents or blending pencils to blend I basically get my blends through lots and lots of layers not to say I never ever use them occasionally something will just shout that it needs a little bit of help um, but most of the time I find the blends that I get it's basically controlling your pencil pressure um, will really give you that natural smooth finish that we want base at the front and now I'm just going to look at his eyes so I'm just double checking the shape and the position of the eyelashes where I've got them just showing how oh, just a little rounder there 